Hello, and welcome back to the Interpac Academy. I'm Teresa Hippis from the Interpac Commercial Marketing Team. Interpac offers over 1,000 different cylinder models, ranging in capacity, stroke, actuation, configuration, and material makeup. In this second course of the video series, we will discuss things to consider when sizing the best cylinder for your application. To correctly size a cylinder, there are three main things to understand. The total force capacity required, the stroke needed, and any limiting space requirements. If it is a lifting system, the number of lift points and an accurate assessment of the weight distribution at each lift point also needs to be understood. Before looking at an actual application, the 80% rule needs to be considered. The rule recommends that it is best to size your cylinder to only 80% of its max stroke and capacity. This improves the stability and life of the cylinder while allowing for slight miscalculations or fluctuations in the load. When observed, this improves the factor of safety for all applications as well. The cylinder capacity for an application is based on the total load to be applied or lifted and the number of cylinders required to do the job. If the required load is 80 tons or 746 kilonewtons and requires the force to be applied at one point, the best solution would be to use a cylinder with a 100 ton or 933 kilonewton capacity. This provides the required 80 ton or 746 kilonewton force and follows the 80% rule. If you need to apply this 80 ton or 746 kilonewton force over four separate points, then four 25 ton or 232 kilonewton cylinders would be a good choice. This option will provide enough force and again, follow the 80% rule. This allows for additional capacity to compensate for any load shift or slight miscalculations. Now let's look at the same application and determine the stroke requirements to safely lift this load eight inches or 203 millimeters. Because the stroke is not affected by the number of lift points, we only need to look at one scenario for either the single or multi-cylinder application. To follow our 80% rule guidelines, we should specify a 10 inch or 254 millimeter stroke cylinder or cylinders for this application. For many lifting applications, space can be at a premium. In applications like bridge bearing replacement, cylinders with a minimum collapsed height are usually required. In these applications, solutions like load return cylinders can be the only choice. Load or gravity return cylinders usually offer the maximum stroke in the shortest package. Given the special circumstances in these applications, the 80% rule may not be possible due to the collapsed height requirements. In industrial applications, the space limitations tend to be less of a challenge as the cylinders may be mounted in a machine such as a press, a puller, or a bender. In many of these applications, the machine may be designed to accept the optimum cylinder size. There are a few other options available when the cylinder stroke will not fit due to reduced space. First, select a cylinder with a stroke that fits correctly into the reduced space, and then to get the required lift, you can perform segmental lifts by using a cribbing system. Lift the load a certain amount Crib the load into place, lower the cylinder, shim the cylinder for the next lift, and then start the cycle over. Do this until the proper height has been reached. This process requires the proper selection of cribbing material. Another selection, if envelope space allows, is to select a smaller capacity cylinder of the same stroke as these tend to have a slightly smaller collapsed height. Then, place multiple cylinders side by side to get the required lifting capacity. A few things to consider when you're selecting a cylinder that will be used in a lifting application with a confined space. Single acting, load return cylinders usually have the lowest collapsed height 
and double acting cylinders have the greatest collapse height for a specific capacity and stroke. When setting up a lift system with long hose lengths, double acting cylinders offer the best retract performance due to being powered on the retract cycle. Double acting cylinders are usually higher in cost due to the added seals, coupler, and additional hose and hydraulic system requirements. I hope you found this video on sizing your industrial cylinder useful. In the final episode of the series, we will discuss some popular cylinder attachments that may help simplify your application. For further information, please visit us at interpac.com or reach out to your nearest Interpac contact for further assistance. I'm Teresa Hippis, and for Interpac Academy, thank you for watching.